guys, Gaston from Connecting Tennis here. Welcome to another video. Today we're gonna get into the talking about the hand speed on the forehand. Um, this video was very, very much requested, okay? And I wanna keep working in the things that you need to know, the things you need to improve to having a massive forehand, not only uh, flat with a spin, but most importantly, like I always say, consistent. So the more hand speed you have to apply your forehand, the better it's gonna be, and the more resources it's gonna give you okay to get high balls fast balls and low balls especially when you have those balls that maybe are this height from the floor okay that you need a lot of hand speed to be able to to give different directions to the balls also when you're getting into the returning if you see the pro players when they get okay they made the split and they go and they just play the fast forehand with the hand to get a really fast down the line uh, return or a, a good short angle that's everything coming from the power, okay, and the strength they have in the forearm and the control they have in the in the in the hand to be able to hit the ball. So first, be before getting to the drills, I'm gonna give you a little warm up. Very important, especially if it's the first thing you do when you get into the court, because you're gonna be working so much with the forearm and the wrist. So it's very important, and all the sides of the wrist, okay, are warm up. So after the warm up, I'm gonna show you a couple of drills. I'm gonna try to put a couple of uh, videos of some pro players so you can understand a little more what we're talking about. Of course, the more speed you have in the, in the hand for the forehand, if you're a one-hander, it's gonna help you a lot. And also for the serve, okay? It doesn't look like, but the more power, the more control, and the more um, strength you have in the forehand, of course, it's gonna give you better resources to when you go to serve. So let's get to the warm up. So first one, okay, as soon as you get into the court, the first thing you're gonna do is just get in the racket and start to have the racket in your hand, start to move it around, okay? I like to do a figure eight with the racket. You can see it here, okay? Starting to move the wrist around, starting to get the forearm warmed up. Again, if you, if you already played before you're gonna do this, you probably don't need to do it, but I wanna give you all the resources just in case you go only to the court to practice this, okay? And make you conscious about the the how important is the warm up? Okay, so you can be here for like 20, 30 seconds moving the racket around. You can go up and down like this, okay? Then you can leave the racket aside. You can get a, an elastic band, okay? It doesn't have to be too, too strong. You can make it stronger to put in one side like this if you need. You're gonna, okay, put your arms in front, as you can see here, and start once you get a good point of a stretch, only with your wrist moving outside. Okay, it's gonna help you a lot to get all the, the muscles of the forearm, okay, connecting your elbow and the wrist, okay, the flexors of the wrist to get uh, warmed up. You can also do this if you wanna do one hand, okay, you can put it back on the fence and then just moving the hand, bringing it like this, but I like it so you don't need to, to put it on anywhere, you can just have it here with your hands, okay? You can do three, three sets of 20 seconds like this, Okay, then you keep moving a lot and then just a little stretching before getting okay not too much before getting into a drill so now that I gave you a couple of tips on how to warm it up now I really feel my forearm uh, getting on fire we're gonna get into the into the drills all right let's go so for the first one before getting into the real hitting you know I like always to go from less to more okay being conscious and starting to get the movements before getting into any hitting so and it's also gonna help a little as, as you know the warm up. What you're gonna do is get in the racket, try to put an elastic band into a fence, or if somebody can hold it for you, but if you're alone, it's gonna be better here on the fence. You're not gonna put it on the height of your hips. You're not gonna put it above. You're gonna go a little between your hips and your knees because you want to recreate this movement of from low to high that you do on the forehand to get in the, the power and spin. What's the problem if you put it on the height of your hips? Instead of doing this movement that you do in the forehand, okay, in the hitting, you're gonna be doing this movement, which is bad and it's probably gonna uh, hurt you. And when you do this movement in the forehand, I mean, it, this doesn't exist. So you want to create this from low to high movement to work. So you're gonna put the racket here. The farther you have it from your hand, the more the more strength you're gonna get, the more power you will need to get to be able to move the racket. So I'm gonna do it here, part of the racket, I like it. It's already uh, challenging. So from here, okay, you get a little far. 
racket behind and you're just gonna work into this one you get the the good stretch on the line of your body just working here with the grip okay in this moment here we did something like this when we talk about the cleaning forehand video if you haven't seen it you have the link in the description but here you're just working on the speed of the racket okay after you get it you will feel the racket very light I want to give you this drill first because it's gonna help you to keep warming up and to get what's important when you're working on, on a speed okay of the ball is to have something before that then is gonna make you feel the ball and the racket lighter because that's that gives you I mean a, a sense of the racket having a racket very light on the hand and that the ball doesn't have any weight so you're gonna actually feel that you're hitting the ball much faster so after doing this now yes we're gonna go into some hitting so you can work more into the speed of the ball when you hit the when you hit the shot so now yes we're gonna get into hitting again if you don't have anybody to throw the ball for you you can do it on your own okay you have probably seen this drill many many times where you hit the balls one after each other as fast as you can here don't worry where the ball is going you only want to work on the hand speed here it's close to what we did on the forehand drill when we're working on a spin but there you were actually trying to create a spin and put the ball in here nowhere okay it doesn't matter of course try to aim to our side of the net but it doesn't matter again where it goes just worry on the speed you put on the ball and how fast you can accelerate your hand so i'm gonna try to hit here six balls okay you're gonna get here in forehand position and again fast you can see of course if you have somebody throwing the ball for you it, it will be much faster because you don't have to be getting the ball but I didn't worry at all in how uh, my technique look I was just thinking in after I toss the ball what I do from tossing to hitting okay and only working in the hand speed the more you get here the many 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 balls you do of course the more tired you're gonna get in the hand and that's actually when you start to gain the speed on the hand okay so we're gonna go to the second drill now all right so we started with the warm-up we went into the fence with the rust the racket in the elastic band we had the first drill with the balls with the bounce and now we're gonna go to the one that is actually gonna give you a lot more okay uh hand speed which is gonna be throwing the ball and hit it okay from the air no bounce at all so you have to be fast don't toss the ball too high okay this is a secret here if you toss it too high you're gonna have so much time to wait for it and hit it the idea is that you just let it go at the height of your chest so actually the ball fast uh fall fast so you're gonna be fast into the movement here of hitting it okay before it falls so again six seven balls as many as you can put on your pocket again you can do this with somebody else if you have somebody to toss you the ball but the idea here and i want to show you that you can actually do it by yourself and you can get into a court okay and practice this into anywhere and just practicing so you don't need okay oh no i can't i can't do this because i don't have anybody to toss the ball for me of course you can do it of course you can train your own it actually takes only the willing to improve so again let's go here right that one is gonna give you it's gonna get you a lot more tired that's why I say it's very important to warm up you can see how you're forcing here your forearm and your hand there is another very good drill and variation for this one that I want to give you I'm not gonna do it but I'm telling you here that you can add as a four here yeah, the drill number four if you get wet balls and pay attention here wet balls okay you can get all balls that you don't use anymore you just bring it back with water just put them there and then you take them out and you don't do it from the air here you do the one with the bouncing ball with the wet balls but pay attention don't do this for more than 
15 balls, okay, the wet ones, no more than 15, okay, once a week or once every two, three weeks. Why? Because the ball gets really heavy and you don't want to be forcing and hitting wet balls all the time because it's a heavy ball and you can get hurt, okay? Your elbow, you can stress so much your elbow and your wrist. So if you do the ones that I show you, okay, warm up on the fence and these two, many, many repetitions, you can do it. The wet ones, it's gonna be a good addition, but maybe once every three weeks, okay, 15, 20 balls, no more than that. And especially if you're working with kids or if you are a kid or if you're working with your kids, okay, try to don't force this too much because the ball gets really wet, really heavy and you can hurt, okay, if you're not very well trained um, and strong in your arm, all right? So those were the drills that I wanted to show you today to work on hand speed. There are many, many more. They're gonna make in another video um, with people tossing the ball for me, okay? So you can work with somebody else on this one. But on that special video, I wanted just to show you where you can work on yourself. All right, guys, if you like the video, please uh, subscribe, like it, share it with your friends, everything. And I wanna give you a little uh, spoiler here of all the requests I have of people, uh, not only here in person, but online, asking me if I have any course or any entire training package with a specific, uh, a specific drills and shots and progressions. Well, I'm gonna tell you that I'm working on a forehand course. It's gonna be a 10 models course, more than probably five hours of videos. 10 models with four or five videos into each model where we're gonna go from the, the total basic, okay, from the grip until all the, all the way up until, you know, uh, developing a, a complete forehand, flat with a spin, high balls, low balls, defending forehand, attacking forehand, uh, progression drills everything okay it's gonna be a lot of content that I'm recording just as low because I want to put the best quality content on that so just telling you okay stay tuned because it's gonna be great I'm probably gonna be launching that uh, the end of January February so if you're interested just uh, keep the social media so you know where I'm launching it it's gonna be amazing I mean I, I'm really happy uh, doing the, that work so yeah, that was it for today. Subscribe to the channel if you didn't. Thank you guys and see you in the next one.